Okay, let's try to talk about the relative abundance of isotopes. So we basically know that isotopes are atoms of the same element with different mass numbers. So examples is we have carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. So when you look at these guys, they have got the actual masses, atomic masses to be as indicated. So for carbon 13 is exactly 13.00 three three five five but it is called carbon thirteen. Of course if you talk about carbon twelve it's exactly twelve and then these have got percentages of existence or which we are calling the relative abundance by percentage. So this one is ninety eight point eight nine percent. Carbon thirteen is one point one one percent. Carbon fourteen is 1 by 10 to the power negative 10 percentage by percent which is a very small value 0 0.00000 imagine having 10 zeros which is just too small so its value is negligible so when you look at the periodic table we can't show all the isotopes because we're just going to have too many because many atoms have got many elements have got isotopes so we use what we call the relative atomic mass which is derived from the isotopes given the abundance and the atomic masses so we're going to demonstrate how come on our periodic table for carbon we have 12.01 so it's not like the 12 was gotten from the 12 like i've said this 12 as you've seen is exact so how come we have 12.01 where does it come from okay so the fact that this one is higher in terms of abundance it has got the higher effect on the on the average so therefore Let's try to calculate. Relative atomic mass is basically the atomic mass multiplied by the abundance plus. So we'll do the same for the others as well. So this formula depends on how many you are given. In this case, we are considering only two because the 14 is just is negligible. We are able to ignore it. Okay. So let's try to perform the calculation there. So for carbon 12, the percentage is 98.89 over 100 plus 13.003355 multiplied by 1.1. .1. One. Okay, so grab your calculator there. Twelve multiplied by ninety-eight point eight nine divided by a hundred plus thirteen point zero zero three three five five multiplied by one point one one divided by a hundred. So the answer that I'm getting is. 12.011 and other values there 1 again 3724 so rounding off answer to four significant figures our answer becomes 12.01 which is the value that you see on the periodic table so it is derived from the isotopes of carbon so this applies to all the other isotopes elements with isotopes carbo copper bromide talk about chlorine as well given its isotopes you should be able to find the relative atomic mass if you're given the abundance okay so what if they give us the relative atomic mass and then they ask us to find the relative abundance how do you go about that so that's the second question that we have so if the masses of one isotope of nitrogen is given so we have the atomic mass of nitrogen 14 and then we also have for nitrogen 15 find the relative abundance of the isotopes given that the relative atomic mass is that so we've been given the relative atomic mass remember our formula is the relative atomic mass is equal to 
the atomic the molar the atomic mass multiplied by the abundance uh, just like that so we'll substitute quickly so we have 14.007 so in this case what we are finding is different okay so i'll use x to denote the abundance so if we have x we expect that the other one is going to be 100 minus x what it means is if you have 40 for example it means the other one is going to be 100 minus 40 since there are only two which is obvious to skist right okay now to make our calculations easier we will rather take everything in terms of uh, divided by 100 by 100 so that you have uh, 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 so therefore instead of saying 100 minus x we will say one will be considered to be x by percentage, the other one will be considered to be 1 minus x. We've divided everything by a 100. Okay, each time we work with this, it's, it's easier. So, I'll start with nitrogen 14. Nitrogen 14, the actual atom, atomic mass is 14.003. So, consider that one to be x by percentage. Plus... The other one is going to be 15.000 as seen, and then it will be 1 minus x. Okay, so you use these. This is what is very important in terms of our calculations. So quickly we try to find the value of x. So multiply by 15. You have 15.00 for the one and then again you have minus 15.00 x so collecting the like terms on the left hand side we have 14.007 this one will go the other, the other side to be 15.00 on the right hand side we can quickly add this plus that so 14.003 minus 15.00 so we have negative 0.997x on the left 14.007 minus 15 we have negative 0.993 equal to negative 0.997 so divided by divide by 0 0.997 on both sides so the value of x that I'm getting is equal to 0 0.99 0 0.99 so I can take it to be nine nine six so that's the value of uh, my x that i'm getting so since we have got our value of x we can try to look at what we had let's observe now i'd notice that the abundance of carbon 14 was attached to x now i said x was divided by 100 because we used x and 1 minus x so what is that supposed to mean so we we'll have 14 this x is this abundance for carbon 14 or nitrogen 14 so nitrogen 14 therefore by percentage abundance is that value multiplied by 100 which is 99.6 percent and then i can go for the other one nitrogen 15 which is 1 minus x so look at the value that we have 1 minus 0 0.996 so I'm getting 0 .0 0 0.004 so multiply that by 100 so 0.4 percent so basically this is how you get to find the relative abundance of the isotopes when they've given you the relative atomic mass so we've handled both situations where they've not given us and where we've given us a relative atomic mass and just for practice i want you to 
find the relative atomic mass of chlorine given chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 so this one is 75 percent the other one is 25 percent so find the relative atomic mass of a chlorine atom okay so thank you very much for watching this video and have a lovely day